Okay, let's continue 1011. And we were speaking about different hardwares. We saw how different hardwares work, but let's see how Linux sees them. In Linux, we have a concept which is very interesting. It's like a pseudo file system. It is not like the pseudo file system. It's a pseudo file system. And it is like a normal file system. Why it is called pseudo is because it is, these are not actual files on the disk. These are in the memory of the kernel, like a psycho person thinking about things, but exposing them to you. This is a file system inside kernel memories, which shows them to you just like normal files and directories. How kernel understand all these different hardwares we set? First, it has a concept like called SysFS, system file system. This is provided by Linux kernel and export information on kernel subsystems, hardware devices, associated device drivers, and these kind of stuff. When you go inside it, you will see that you are seeing hardwares directly. Things like block devices, which are consist of anything you can write blocks of data on it or read from it, like disks, memory, ROMs, and this kind of stuff. Bus directory, which connects PCI, USB, serial, these kind of devices to each other, and also other stuff. Let's have a look. I will go to the Fedora we had. You can go to whatever system you want. We will run a terminal. I have it here. Let's increase the font size a little bit. I will go cd, change directory. We will see these commands later. sys. Now I'm in the sys directory. If I do a ls, I will see different parts. As you can see, block devices, bus, change. I will speak about it in this session, but bus will do a communication between processes and devices. Uh, classes, devices, devices, firmware, file systems, kernel data, modules, things about power, and everything. You don't need to know them one by one, especially in the sys directory. These are directly how kernel sees its hardware. For example, if I go to the bus, you will see that, okay, I have different things here. I have a PCM CIA data. I have USB data. I have plug and play data, PCI data, memory, general purpose I.O. as we spoke about it. I have CPUs. If I go into the CPU, you will see that, okay, this, and let me go to the next step, devices. We have one CPU, which system sees. This is like a memory of the kernel about its devices. If you connect a new device, it will appear also here. But the point is, most of the time, we, don't, we are not going to use sysfs unless we are doing some deeper troubleshooting. Most of the time, we are working with slash dev. Slash dev or user space dev is responsible for translating those hardware to the standard, again in quotes, devices. What's the story? Say you have two different hard disks from two different vendors which are working in two different methods completely non-related to each other. One coming from one very old company called Company X. Another is coming as a very state-of-the-art SSD disk connected to your USB, for example. But at the end, it is not important. It's a hard disk for me. It's a block device which I can write hard, which I can write on or I can read from. This is what UDEV does. UDEV sees these devices, creates a, another uh, pseudo file system in slash dev and assign files to those devices here. So whatever hard disk which is connected to my computer first will be called S. DA and its first card partition will be called SDA1. If later I connect another device which works like a hard disk, 
it goes to C somewhere on the USB on this interrupt, but at the end, UDEV will convert it to slash dev slash SDB, and its first partition will be SDB1. So for me, these looks the same. It's not important for me that behind this, what driver works, what company had made this, is this coming from Seagate or this is coming from some old, very out of business company or whatever. It is SDA1 and SDA-B. Also, UDEV is able to understand different devices. And I can tell it, I have one 128 gigabyte USB disks with this serial number. Whenever I connected it to you, to this computer, mount, uh, sorry, create a file which is called slash dev, my backup, and use this as my backup disk. So it's kind of, uh, what's the correct word? Transparently creating files here, which I'm looking for one word. Let me drink coffee and I may remember. Okay, found it. I was looking for abstraction. It was, <laughs> it abstracts the hardware from this file. So you are just working with the file and system is taking care of what the driver, what is the driver behind it, how you should communicate with it or whatever on the hardware level. But here you had a file system with all devices there, which is a much, much, much easier technology to work on. If I want to show you here, I can go to slash dev and do a ls here. You can see that you have all your block devices, memory, hard disks, whatever. You have the bus. If you have a CD-ROM, you will see it here as a hardware device which you can read or write from. Your CPU, your disks. If you have a floppy disk, it will go here. And other stuff like the fun ones can be for example random where is random here it's a device which gives you random data if you want random sometime also you have one device which gives you only zero when you run it also you have things like as i told you sda Yes. This is your hard disk, first partition, second partition. If I connect a new USB disk to this computer, you will see SDB, and most probably SDB1 as its first partition. And TTYs, we will speak about them later. These are the terminals we are using to communicate, or standard error, standard in, and standard out. Standard out is where if you type something, it will go there, if I say echo hider, this will go to the standard out. At the moment, my standard out is my terminal. So you will see it here. In Linux, it's possible to change it, for example, to a printer. So you will, whatever you do, the result will be on a printer or on a file or whatever you want. And I think we covered more than enough. You can also, head will show the first lines. If I do a head on random, you will get some random data. If program needs some random data, it can read from random. And this was the UDEV. We have another concept, which is DBUS. And DBUS is a message bus system. If two processes or a process and a device or whatever wants to communicate with each other, they can use a bus, which is called DBUS, put the data here, they will tell, okay, give this to that device. The bus will go through the whole operating system and whatever device needs the data will get it. And what we have more about the DBUS? DBUS helps coordinate process life cycles if processes need to speak with each other and it makes it simple and reliable to code a single instance application because your application can have a code and does something. Another application can send data using the bus and whichever of your uh, instances want to use this data can get the data from this bus and use it. This is more about programming, but it's good to have an understanding about the bus. And the last thing for this part, I believe, is the proc directory. This is about the processes. 
it's located in proc another pseudo file system in the memory of the kernel like a psycho thinking about things but exposing them to you and here you will see different things inside the kernel how kernel is thinking about the processes you have irqs which are interrupt requests when you are programming you can register some interrupts to yourself if you are a sound card you can say okay interrupt 7 is mine and each time someone says interrupt 7 see a kernel will go to the sound card and say okay what what should i do so this way you can constantly play music when someone else is doing something in a older days it was used a lot nowadays it is used for some hardware communication you can have io ports for example if you have a modem here and you want to send out data a program can connect to this port as an io port and send something out or write to a disk or whatever input output it needs there is a faster way which is called dma direct memory access on the direct memory access you assign part of the memory for one of your ios for example you say i have my graphics here whatever i write in this memory should go to my graphics so you can write much 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 faster on the memory instead of connecting to your graphic card and sending commands these are for old days nowadays you'll see less and less of these kind of tweaks operating system is uh, providing all of this to you directly and you have processes network settings and other things in proc in short proc is a pseudo file system which shows you how kernel is thinking about the processes their communication and their configuration let's have another look there if i go to cd proc do a ls you will see different things i have here these numbers are for processes every process in linux have a number has a number so 2253 is one process you can enter it and see the configurations and status about that specific process all like files now you understand why i'm saying this is a pseudo file system you can go back there are some interesting files like chat will show the contents of the file you have things like cpu info you have things like uptime how long the system was up memory info you can do a chat uh, for example cpu info will show you the information about your cpu says okay you only have one cpu cpu number zero cpu family six it's intel core i7 cpu blah 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 and other things you can say chat mem info it says this is the information i have about your memory how big is the kernel stat how many page tables you have how many whatever you can say chat uptime okay this server was up this many seconds or you can go for example to a directory which is called sys lots of system configurations are here for example net i will go to net sorry i'm in the pwd will show you where you are i'm in proc sys net you can go to ip uh, ipv4 for example all the configurations or status about it version 4 is here for example cat ip forward ip forward is zero so i'm not forwarding ips you can even write something in it say write one in ip forward it says okay you cannot do this because you don't have enough access in linux systems if you need to run the command with the highest possible access you will add a sudo in the beginning we will speak about it later sudo still permission denied so i cannot write one in ip forward okay i cannot i have to change it from somewhere else sorry anyway uh and this is the proc directory you can write into some of them as you saw and you can read from most of them all of them even when i was writing this document i had a lenovo laptop which had a led on its lid and it was very funny acpi is what controls the power management so you can 
you were able to write on into the light here. And if you go to the Proc ACPI and IBM, you were able to write on on the file which was called light and the LED would light up. Or for example, on the Proc system file system, you have file max. How many is the maximum of the files? You can write a larger number there and it would work. This is how you can tweak how kernel manages or see how it works. But keep in mind, you are just writing in the memory of the kernel. If you want to make this permanent, you have to write them as a configurations most of the times in slash etc. We will see it later. This was the second part. Let's see some more commands on the next part and finish this module, which was the most difficult modules you will learn in Epic, in my opinion.